What is going on guys? We have got the latest DLC for a Drive Club eventually working. I'll explain to you what happened with that DLC, which is pretty... Um, I think it was a pretty funny affair. I don't think Drive Club thought it was funny, but um... Yeah, I'll, I'll explain that to you uh, soon, sooner into the video. So we're going to check out the uh, Drive Club DLC. The five cars included in, in the paid DLC are the Caterham R500 Super Light, the, um, sorry, the uh, McLaren, well, if it, sh if it ends up showing up, which I'm sure it will at some point, uh, the McLaren 650S Coupe, there it is, and uh, the... Oh, what was the other car? Oh my god, I feel so embarrassed. I don't know what the other car was. <laughs> crap, please save me. Uh, crap, 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 crap. Alright, this isn't good, obviously. This is not good at all. Um, there was another car. I c the Ikona Volcano was um the free car for the month, but I'm not sure what the other paid car for the supercars was. I'm sure we will figure it out eventually. Uh, but the um, other two paid cars were the Jaguar six uh, CX75 Prototype Edition, and um, of course the Ferrari Enzo. And um, this is this is a really cool car, one of my favorite cars that I've seen from a DLC that I want to come to the game because Ferrari's engines are m absolutely fantastic. They have, uh, as I was explaining to a non-car friend a couple of days ago, they have some of the best engine noises <laughs> out of all cars made in the entire world. Now, I'm just going through this list again, hoping, oh, of course, it was the Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 Sentinental Edition. Now, this is a cool car, but um, not a big fan of Corvette, that's probably why I forgot it. On the other hand, the McLaren 650S Cube, I don't like this car that much, but um, I do like McLaren in general, so that should be fun to drive. So we're going to check out the Caterham's R500 Super Light here, and um, basically what happened with Drive Club servers was, um, they ended up uh, malfunctioning for people in Europe, which includes me because I'm in Australia, and uh, everyone in Europe was basically unable to download the DLC, and uh, basically we're behind by a day now, I'm pretty sure America's had this DLC for a day, and we haven't actually had it, so yeah, uh, that's the reason I was unable to upload the video, I was, I, I've been checking the store constantly for the past two days to upload this video of, on, uh, of the new cars, but I haven't been able to, so uh, yeah, sorry about that late video, but I, I personally could not do anything about that. Unless I somehow went and bought Drive Club on my US account and, you know, downloaded, paid for the season pass again, but that'd be completely stupid, so, yeah, I didn't end up doing that. Now, this car, this car at the moment, what I'm seeing, it's, um, it's decent, it's not the best thing ever, it's a, it's a nice car to drive, it's just got some, uh, I, I have a feeling this rain is affect, this slight rain is affecting it a bit, uh, other than that, it's a pretty nice car to drive, not gonna lie. Now, I don't actually know much about this Caterham car, so please bear with me if I suck it. Oops, we're going to break all these mirrors here. So please bear with me if I don't actually know uh, much history behind the car. It looks, like a, it, looks like a, it looks like a classic. Now, I'm not sure how well this car actually drifts, but uh, it doesn't seem like it drifts too well, to be honest. The car is pretty nice to control, however. The only car in this game I've actually had problems with uh, controlling personally after driving for a while is the Koenigsegg Agira R. Not sure why that's the case, but yeah, it is a problem. I cannot control that car for shit. I tried driving it so many times because it's my favorite car, but I just cannot do it. Now, as, as you can see, we are using the new J uh, Japan tracks, mainly because um, if you guys did not see the previous video, I want to showcase these tracks off. They're some of the most beautiful dry, uh, tracks in Drive Club. And um, I think that they should be should be shared with the general audience who enjoys this game. Uh, if you're unable to download it or anything like that. Now this is a really cool view for this car. This is one of the better views for this car. Like I could I could just imagine using photo mode so well with this. As you can hear, the engine noise is fairly high pitched, which is not bad, not a bad or good thing. It is just a fairly neutral thing, depends on your personal preference. I personally like uh, things that are slightly lower pitched, but this isn't bad by any means. It's got a, it's got a decently nice engine voice, uh, engine noise. I'm gonna go back to uh, cockpit view. As you can see, the gear indicator, uh, shift indicator is there, which is good. Always like the shift indicator on cars, especially with a game like this where it doesn't show you your speedometer in the bottom right of the screen. So yeah, that's always been a good thing. 
Now we are nearing the finish of the track here. As you can see, I have beaten up this car a fair bit because of my poor driving skills. But, uh... What's going on guys? We're going to be checking out the second car, the Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 Sentinental Edition. Now, this is a really cool car. I'm not going to put any liveries on it just so we can see the standard stock form. We're going to be driving on my fa one of my favorite tracks from the Japan DLC, which is uh, Nakasendo. Now, in my opinion, the only reason this track is even cool in the first place is because of that one tunnel in the track. It is really, really awesome and I'll let you guys know when we get to it. Oh, he's not really sure what to expect of this car. Um, I know of the Chevrolet uh, Corvette editions of obviously of cars, but I'm not really sure what this uh, Sentinental edition is about, to be honest. And so this is sort of like a blind uh, blind entry into this uh, Corvette. Now the car has a fairly uh, fairly passive engine noise, which isn't a bad thing by any means. We, we're gonna actually go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and change the audio so we can hear the car engine a bit more. So we're going to change it to 60, go back. So now we can hear the car engine a bit more, hopefully. It's still got a really soft engine regardless, but uh, it's got that deep engine noise, which a lot of people like, but I'm um, not a big fan of, but it's not too bad at all. It's got a really nice front view, this car. Damn, that drift was fairly nice. Oh, didn't take that turn good at all. Took that turn fairly well. We're going to go into cockpit view in a second after we... Uh, once we get to the tunnel. Now, this is one of the coolest bridges in the entire game. Looks really, really awesome. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, like, that's another reason I use track. It's just so... It's got such variety in the entire track. It's amazing. Now we had to do a bit of a handbrake there, but that's fine. Managed to get the drift off and the turn fairly well. So we're going to go into cockpit now, and you guys will see what I mean by this tunnel. This tunnel just reminds me of uh, Singapore, to be honest. I mean, fantastic tunnel. One of the best tunnels in the game. I love going through this tunnel every time I play this track, so yeah. It's just my personal personal preference. Might not be a thing with everyone, but yeah, that's that's the main reason why I do like that track. Now, we didn't take this drift the best we could have, but uh, we didn't end up crashing, so all is good. We're going to go into um, dashboard view here and check out. Now, in my opinion, if you're playing this game seriously and you're playing it for times, you should definitely be playing this view because most of the high-end cars do end up having the speedometer and revolutions per uh, minute uh, meter up there. So it does end up helping when you want to tell when you need to brake or anything like that. And it also gives you uh, most of the vision on the screen. Now, a lot of people tell me you should just drive out of car view. That tells you everything, doesn't it? But at the end of the day, that revolutions per, especially if you're going for top timing scores, that revolutions per minute meter is not really that accurate at all. It only um, only gives you an indication of when to shift. But if you want to go for top times, you should probably probably use this mode. Not gonna lie, uh, it's one of the better modes. Now I'm not good enough to do anything like that, so I might just be talking out of my ass. But yeah, I mean, when I get into this game and I actually concentrate, I am much better than I I end up driving in these videos. But I'm still not the best guy ever, I mean, there are definitely people that are better than me out there at this game for sure, but I do think I'm uh, definitely not the worst either, so yeah. Uh, trustable yet somewhat uh, unproven resource is what I think I am. Let's go on ahead and finish this track in outer car view because it's just such a nice track and I can't, I can't, I can't just drive this track in uh dashboard view the whole time that'll be ruining half of the beauty of the track uh this is this is a fantastic turn to just do a drift on obviously i screwed it up a bit there but uh yeah if you do manage to get a drift off on that turn it ends up being extremely nice even on this one this turn is a really good drift like there you go we got a we got a drift score of like 1k there or something and we didn't even bother trying that much this end bit's really good because it's really uh urban and industrialized which is uh pretty awesome while still maintaining the uh, relatively cultural aspect on the left of the left of the road which is cool now this car not not one of my favorites but it does indeed handle very nicely 
Very nice car to drive, uh, drive in if you do not like engine noises, because the engine noise is fairly low, as I mentioned, and it's not really a, uh, it's not really an un uncontrollable car in my opinion. So yeah, the Corvette uh, Stingray Zero One Continental Edition, very nice car to drive in. Make sure you guys check that car out. Definitely a, uh, definitely one of the. Uh, Hidden gems of this. Uh, hey again, guys, we're gonna be checking DLC. out the McLaren 650S coupe in this um this video section of the video, and yeah, we'll see how this goes. Uh, McLaren 650S. Now this car came to Forza. What was it? Two months ago. Wasn't a big fan of this car when it did come out, but I've been looking at uh looking at the site from McLaren, and I've grown quite a liking for this car. I just hope it's better in this game than for Forza Horizon 2, which I'm sure it will be. I'm sure they put more effort into uh, in this game compared to Forza. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it will be. So automatically, the handling is much better. I did not like the Forza handling of uh, this car was just extremely fast and not not didn't really feel good to control in my opinion. So that was entirely my fault. That was not the car's fault. I was just driving too fast. Let's go to dashboard view for a bit. So that drift could have been better, went a bit pear shaped, we're gonna just reverse out of that. See I can take turns really well like that, but uh, I just don't end up doing it most of the time. Now I changed the time of day to be a bit a uh, bit more at night so we get to see the Nighttime uh, tunnel a bit better and this bridge in fact looks really really nice so you can see the interior of the car I can already tell it's much more polished than the Forza Horizon 2 version, so that's really cool uh, Definitely feels like a better car to drive in my opinion Now one of the cars. I'm really really looking forward to for an entirely different reason other than the car itself is actually the Jaguar uh, CX-75 mainly because of the fact they added curves to the acceleration, which is really cool So as you can see, this tunnel is just amazing at night. I can't even explain how good it is because the end isn't blocked either. You can see what's what's at the other end of the tunnel, which is even b cooler. Oh oh, I think I think. Oh damn! I thought I thought I might have screwed something up there. Okay, so we're doing this track pretty well at the moment. The main the main issue with this track, in my opinion, is these turns at the end. So, let's see how we take these. Oh, that turn was pretty good. I'm gonna go into auto car view for this next turn. Show you guys what I mean by these turns are hard to take. You have to, like, sort of time your drift at the right time if you want to take them at the best potential. And you have to, uh, sort of turn as well. It's kind of, kind of hard to do, but not that hard once you get used to it. Now, this car... One thing with this car I don't like at the moment, it's once you start losing control, there's no way you're going to get control back. So I'm not sure what the handling stat was, but it feels like it would be relatively low to the others, compared to the other supercars. Still a really nice car to drive regardless. Excellent engine noise. Once again, one of the best engine noises alongside Ferrari. Okay, we're gonna try to do that drift as I said on this thing. Um, so that could have gone better, I just went a bit wide. We still get, did get, get about 3k points from that one drift. So as you can see, it is a very, very good corner to drift on and one that everyone should consider. This, this track in general is just good in general. I just can't pick anything out of this track, it's just amazing, it's got everything. Even at night time, it still looks beautiful.
All right, so that that track is completed with relative ease. Pretty nice, uh, pretty nice car, as I mentioned. Definitely go check out the McLaren 650S if you get the DLC. Uh, one of the better cars next to. Uh, I, of course, I don't like the Caterham personally. I don't like the Corvette personally, but one of the What's better cars are be next to the Kona Volca, Volcano, uh, Volcano which I'll show off. This is a this is so a really yeah, cool so car. As you can see by the door video. opening itself. Uh, it's just it's such a pleasure to drive. This is one of the free cars in the DLC. So if you guys have the game and you have internet access, go ahead and download this. Really, really good car to drift in, in my opinion. One of the better cars to definitely drift in. So uh, yeah, let's just get it get get it rolling basically. So that corner was extremely close, but we did manage to make that corner. That's all good and well. So you can see it's very easy to control the drift and turn in this car in general. Really nice car driving. The handling's also fantastic, so you won't, you won't have any situations where you just can't brake enough or you just uh, don't turn well enough. It'll always work out for you if you want to drift in this car, I'm not going to lie. So let's try drifting on this corner since we have a drift challenge anyway. So that obviously wasn't the best drift ever. It, wasn't, it was a pretty crappy drift in general. So you can see, you can get pretty easy drift scores with this car. It's just a really nice car to drift in, easy to drift in, and easy to drive in general. Now I've already driven this car as I mentioned, but uh, yeah, I, need, I would of course need to include it in this video because it is part of the DLC technically. It was just, uh, it, it just wasn't plagued by the issues which the other uh, paid DLC cars were. So yeah. Anyway guys, this is going to be a, I think this this car just speaks for itself, I mean I've already driven it, I think that's the main issue. We're going to go into dashboard view, see how it is, and we're going to do another lap and we're going to finish with uh, the Ikona Volcano. Now this is another car like the Mazanti Adventure that I've never heard of and Drive Club has brought to the game, which is fantastic. Whoopsie daisies. The interior of this car, when you guys see it, it is just amazing. This looks like something from the future. It looks like something from the future, but also from the Devil's Den in general. This is this is like the ultimate reincarnation of the Devil, to be honest. It's like, in my opinion, it's it's the Lamborghini Veneno of this of this uh of this game. So obviously I didn't do that drift the best I could, and uh, I think this is where it's time to end it and end it end it in this particular track. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be starting the hypercar zone. So yeah, see you guys in uh, that. What's going on, guys? We're gonna be checking out the Enzo uh, Ferrari, Ferrari Enzo, basically. Uh, in this segment of the video, we're gonna be checking out the standard color as usual because we want to see what the stock color car looks like. Uh, this is Ferrari in general is one of my favorite manufacturers, not because they are one of the most obviously well known uh, hypercar brand. I mean, like my my favorite car is the Koenigsegg, so I mean, obviously I, I'm I'm not biased or anything. It's just that the engine noise is just so fantastic in every single Ferrari ever made. The engine noise is just this god tier engine, and I don't know how they do it. It just gets me every time. It's literally the best engine noise you'll ever hear from any car in the world. Okay, so that was a very bad turn, but all good, we're still uh, on track to beat this target here. So automatically, this car feels very easy to control. Um, not a hard car to hard car to control. Drifting is also nice. Uh, I, I can't find anything bad about this car so far. It's nice to control, nice to drive, easy in the rain. We'll see how the interior is. Hopefully, the interior is also very nice. I'm gonna swap to uh, dashboard view real quick here. See how we'll see what it's like. And the other thing I like about Ferraris, the gear ratios are very low, as in, 
Shifting up to 5th gear would normally be shifting up to 3rd gear in something like the McLaren, uh, the older McLaren from the 1990s, which was introduced in last month's DLC maybe? I'm not really sure, but yeah. Okay, let's uh, take this corner a bit slower. We're going to be going into in-car view now. Oh, damn, that looks amazing. That looks so cool. Alright, that corner could have gone a lot better than it did, but yeah, it did go pretty badly. Pretty pear-shaped, so all good. As you can see, all Ferraris have that trademark gear shift indicator at the top of the steering wheel, which is great. Fantastic for telling when to shift. This car, as I mentioned, this car just it just handles really well. Nice and easy to drive in. You're probably gonna go a bit longer in cockpit view and then uh, swap to the uh, the car of the uh, the car that we really wanted to know about, the Jaguar. Uh, I can't take this turns for crap though. I'm just bad at driving in general. I'm going to try to do a drift in this corner here, see, seeing as the drifting stat of the Ferrari is actually pretty high. Oh damn, it drifts like a beast! What a god! How do I even stop this thing? It drifts like a god. It can just be used for everything. That was a bad drift, but it still drifted like a god. Alright, we're going to end this uh, this little uh, adventure of our Ferrari Enzo and us here. And we're going to go on to the next car, which is the Jaguar CX-75. So, I'll see you guys in What's that segment. We're going to be checking the out the Jaguar CX-75 Prototype Edition today on Drive Club. Now, this car does indeed have uh, KERS, which is Kinetic Energy uh, Revergent System, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. Probably I'm wrong. In fact, I'm most definitely wrong. But, uh, basically what it is, it stores your braking power to provide an extra boost of acceleration, almost like akin to Nitros, um, to your car. And this is mostly seen in Formula 1s, but some newer cars these days do indeed have this feature. So that's really, really cool. Uh, newer hypercars, that is, do indeed have this feature. So that's really, really cool, and uh, it should be a really fun car to drive in. Automatically, the handling's just a god. I can't... It's just too good. We're going to try accelerating here a bit and see how it goes using the Kurs. And obviously, the more you brake in this car, the more you actually end up... Uh, the more you, more uh, kinetic energy you actually end up getting back. So that's, that's a really cool feature. Obviously it wouldn't be too important in time trial because everything does get reset at the end of a tri time trial lap. But uh, in online races perhaps it could be pretty useful uh, knowing when to break and stuff. Break a lot anyway. It, to recover a lot of that uh, yummy quote unquote uh, quote nitros unquote my bad. So this is really cool. I want to see a car which only has DRS. That would be interesting. Now, I'm, I'm definitely a bigger fan of Kurs than DRS. DRS just makes a car go haywire. Like, especially on the P1. I just can't drive that car when DRS is on. You can only pretty much do it on a long, straight set of road. Besides that, you're, you're screwed if you try to turn while DRS is on. Okay, we're going to go into our uh, dashboard view. Oh, sorry, cockpit view. And we're going to go into dashboard view later in the second lap of the track. See what it's like, obviously. All right, so we, we sort of screwed up there. I can't really see anything anyway. Don't really like the cockpit view of this car. It blocks up too much of the screen, so yeah. But the interior definitely, dashboard definitely does look cool. Looks like something out of uh, Star Wars. Or maybe Star Trek, for those of you that watch Star Trek, which I haven't, by the way. Just seen some of the stuff in that movie and slash show.
As you can hear that 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 sudden boost there, that was the curse just kicking in. Very clear indication of what gear you're in, which is really really cool. Okay, we're gonna go into dashboard view now. While the uh, rain rain has calmed down. I accidentally pressed that button to be honest. Alright, so that's that's the Jaguar CX75 prototype edition. Really cool car, as I mentioned. Uh, definitely one of the better cars to drive in if you're playing a uh, competitive online drive club. And also, definitely a cool car design, as I mentioned. Uh, the tail lights look really, really awesome. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys all in a future drive club video, hopefully, with one of the future DLCs. So, yeah. Um, please remember to follow, uh, sorry, follow my Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube, and check out my other YouTube content. As I'm sure if you enjoyed my commentary, you surely enjoy my other YouTube content regardless. So, yeah, see you guys all later.